What's going on everybody? It's Shinful Penguin here back with another video. Today we're going to be getting into my Spectral Helix Deadeye character I made for League Start and 3.18 Sentinel League. I had a blast playing this build. Uh, for no budget, this was one of the better uh, clearing builds and I really enjoyed it. Uh, it definitely does bosses very well and uh, with more investment I can clear bosses. I have done every boss on probably lower than a 5x budget and uh i haven't done any of the uber bosses i think more investment will be necessary or god tier mechanics uh <laughs> will be needed to do the the uber on a budget uh but yeah you're gonna use some other build to do like the crazy bossers but this is like i would say it's like an a tier bosser and then like a a to b tier farm map farmer so i love this build uh it's really fun Playstyle, I actually firmly enjoy it. Once you get enough cast speed or uh, attack speed, the uh, the smoothness of the build is really fun. It pierces uh, the projectiles pierce all enemies, so it makes it really really fun. Um, so you don't have any investment into uh, pierce or chain or any of that. It's just all damaging uh, support gems that make this build really really nice and really really smooth. Uh, easy damage early on one of the best leveling builds in my opinion uh, you, you know you have a good leveling build when other builds use your skill to level and then they swap later so spectral helix one of the best leveling skills which makes it one of the best league starts in my opinion dead eye just enforces all of the projectile stuff to be really smooth and clean uh and you get tailwind for free um which you don't get on a budget from your boots and then just really good stuff so i've taken this build to the max for a league start i haven't invested too much i probably invested a total of ignoring the clocks the claw i crafted i've spent about 3x on this build total which is very very low um, i've crafted most of my own items uh i bought an enlighten that was pretty much <laughs> everything i spent was an enlighten and a six link and uh yeah it's pretty expensive but if you get this uh build going you don't need to get enlightened until you're you have the money for it obviously but this build is very very strong so we're going to take some uh looks at some of the gear i wanted to talk about the gear first because uh there's a couple options you can go with um i am like really close to being ailment immune on top of spell suppress so if you look at my spell suppression 100 percent of course uh, maxed out res and then my ignite uh chill avoidance at 74 so my avoidance is at 74 percent i have one jewel that gives me 15 percent ignite but so we need 25 percent more of avoidance which we can get by actually crafting 25 percent on our body armor uh and then i would be one percent short so then I, I would just uh, uh, roll the chance to avoid element. So I'd bless this until 20% and that would be 100% uh, ailment immune. But then I won't have the maximum life as max energy shield, which I've been really liking for an additional defensive layer because we don't have a, a energy shield otherwise. Uh, this gives me about like 600 energy shield. So it's actually pretty nice. I've been enjoying that a lot. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about the claw. The claw, you're just going to want as much DPS as you can. Uh, it's You don't care what type of DPS. You're just going to want two. Three is the best option. Uh, and because we're using Trinity, that's why we're focusing on having multiple. And then attack speed and crit chance are the two other best. And this claw is just really good. So, uh, we use Gemini Claw because we get mana gained on hit. So, we infinitely sustain our mana pretty easily. As for the, the shield, uh, you want to get spell suppression, life, and a either ailment avoidance or chaos resistance. Those are, that's like the, tri the third most important. Uh, having some good uh, armor and evasion is really good on your shield as well. So if you get percent uh, energy sh uh, armor evasion, that's also really good. We're using uh, termination grace as well on top of this build. So being bulky is really good for league start because you just want to level up as fast as possible uh, you don't want to die as much using six portals is a not fun defensive layer our helmet uh it hasn't changed since our um my like diary stuff so uh what you're looking at is 
a pretty mediocre helmet i want i needed accuracy because uh i don't have enough accuracy on the build so the main you can get ac accuracy on your gloves your helmet uh your rings and your amulet um you can get it on your claw but don't really get it on your claw i think you can get it on your shield too but there's better mods on there so i got it on my helmet uh so you're gonna need around so i have plus 229 and then i have 337 on there and then that's pretty much all i have as for added accuracy on my build so if you get around uh 500 to 600 you should be pretty good if you follow my passive tree i do also have one jewel that's giving me accuracy so that's the top me off but uh you should just get around five to six hundred accuracy on your gear and uh we're not running precision you can run precision to top it off but we're really set on our uh skill gems on our build uh so yeah another important thing about the helmet is to have socketed spells when you focus um this is procking our hydrosphere tornado and our onslaught so this is how we generate onslaught on bosses um we can just drop it down when you're mobbing as well to get some good uh onslaught boosts uh, if you find a rare enemy but uh yeah pretty much uh tornado um is there to proc the onslaught hydrosphere the proc the um exposure and uh yeah we're juicing out damage uh we have body armor you just want suppression in life um and resistance as you need it i pretty much got all my resistance on my rings and my boots uh not right and then yeah just a little bit on my gloves uh so yeah jewelry spots are basically you're looking for resistance and life on all of them uh your rings you can craft uh minus mana cost so your mana cost is really low for your uh for your attacks so your spectral throw only costs three mana and i only have 26 mana but i can sustain pretty well without hitting anything the second i hit one enemy i leech all my mana back to 100 percent. so that's how kind of how it is and uh yeah so resistance you want to cap off you can get it on any piece of gear um i got a lot on my boots um i also got a lot of life regen from my boots and my belt uh th this is just because i wanted to be tanky on this build life regen is not necessary it's not really that good on this build because we leech so much so other stats are better but yeah movement speed also very important um and we're using non um influence gear we're using base gear and then we're slamming uh eldritch uh currency on all of our stuff so um the another thing i want to mention for helmet uh you spam the what is it <laughs> uh searing exarch so the red eldritch currency if you slam that and you get reduced mana cost of attacks very very important for your build because if i don't have it on my mana cost is 10 I can cast like three and then I like struggle a little bit. Now I can cast like a billion and not worry about it. So uh, the reduced mana cost of attacks is really, really strong. Um, and yeah, so uh, avoid ailments is really good on the boots. If you're going to focus on avoid elements, otherwise you can get whatever damage you want. Action speed is awesome on boots um, from the, the implicit uh, intimidate and spell suppress uh, spell suppress only get it if you need it. Uh, you really don't need it. I got some bad rolls on my chest piece and my... I got an okay roll on my gloves and I don't have any on my helmet. So I needed the implicit. Uh, but otherwise you can get like exposure on hit just to make your mobbing a little cleaner or something else. But you can get it here. Uh, spell suppression is very important for this build because you die without it a lot. Especially against like big bosses uh, like Shaper. A lot of his things are spells. You'll just get... Uh, you'll just die if you don't have spell suppression as for a belt it's pretty lame uh, just a lot of life life regen you don't need life regen and a little bit of resistance I crafted crit uh, when focused crit is lucky when focused which is actually really really good it makes my crit go very very high my on POB it says my crit is around 90% when I, my crits lucky um, and then but in game if I look at it it says it's around 50% so you know pob stuff pob warrior let's go and as for the flask just granite jade because we want to get as much defense quicksilver i like quartz because we don't have phasing on this build uh without a quartz flask which is kind of lame so i, I kind of needed it. it also gives you spell suppression but 
we're capped so it doesn't matter and then a divine flask but yeah if you can you can get phasing from a abyss gem a uh and it will or abyss jewel i mean and the abyss jewel will give you phasing on kill percent chance or whatever and they'll make your mapping a lot smoother so you won't need of quartz you could use something else but those are your options so yeah that's it for the the gear if you have any questions make sure you leave comments down below the pub is going to be linked down below so you can always uh look at all the items i'm quickly hovering over uh and it yeah <laughs> that's just how it is next we're going to be talking about the gem setup so the gem setup also in the pub but we got spectral helix linked with uh added cold i have awakened added cold because it's actually really cheap this league inspiration elemental damage with attacks and night blade and trinity so the two most da biggest damage gems we have are night blade and trinity those are big big damage for our build um trinity makes it so we have a lot of extra pen and extra damage uh night blade makes it so we scale uh, crit multi insane so our crit chance should be better um if we make our crit chance better our crit multi is insane so that's kind of how that's working and we're getting a, a lot of elusive effect and elusive the effect of elusive affects the crit multi we get from night blade support and um we also have a, a withering step to reset that night blade so if you don't know how that works so if i click this my elusive will go up and then it slowly goes down but then um I, I can reset it to be the max value so we get more crit multi for the more effect we have so uh yeah when you hit an enemy you you get it and it goes all the way down then when you hit another enemy it goes all the way back up but what you can do is uh when it's going down you have we have it on left click you can click it and then if you use an action it'll take it off but then your next hit will make it max again so your your amount of uh, elusive effect stays higher continuously if you just keep it on left click so that's how that mechanic works uh but yeah so i think we could take i can take off uh awaken added cold for uh in increased crit i think is a little better um if you don't have a lot of crit uh yeah i i haven't changed it in a little bit but awaken added cold i know it was pretty far up there so that's what i'm using uh we're <coughs> i kind of already talked about the helmet because we have the focus on helmet so we have hydrosphere tornado increased duration and onslaught on that so it just drops tornado gives us onslaught uh and exposure on the enemy uh when we press our focus button right here uh you you get a focus button when you socket something that has said that says trigger socketed spell when you focus um and then it'll be on your bar and then you can get other items that have focus on amulet you can get so uh mana costs you have no mana cost for a certain amount of time while you're focused uh, crit lucky is what I put on my belt. It's really good. Um, and there's a few others that are pretty helpful, but, um, the main one you need is uh, trigger socketed spell on our, uh, we, we have an assassin's mark mark on hit life tap. We need it on life tap because the, the cost of assassin's mark is a lot. So if I take off life tap, uh, you can see it's going to cost 52 mana we don't even have 52 mana so it makes it cost life and we leech life really fast so uh you need life tap on your curse uh, mark on hit setup uh we got i want to go over something a little more important we'll go over aura so we have determination grace wrath linked to enlighten um you need an enlighten to have wrath if you don't have wrath put herald of ice or herald of thunder on um and if you do have enlightened this is the best setup you can have for auras we also have a defiance banner going on to give us extra armor and all that stuff so defiance banner is all on pretty much all builds so you should understand uh we have an ancestral protector that's not doing damage for us it's actually we're just using it for its totem buff which gives us 20 percent more attack speed while it's active you pretty much just use this while you're bossing uh yeah gives us a lot of attack speed really nice we have a cast one damage ta taken molten shell and i like fall molten shell so i can just proc this extra defensive layer when i think i'm about to die uh we have whirling blades and withering step linked to nothing pretty much uh whirling blades you can attach uh faster attacks if you have room but uh i used to have room but uh since we added enlighten i had to take away the faster attacks uh, and then we also have a flame dash because whirling blades doesn't go over walls so we're going to need that flame dash 
to help us out and uh, i believe that's all the gems that we have so yeah i'm gonna post two pobs keep in mind uh one's gonna be with the enlightened one's gonna be without the enlightened uh the the because of course enlightens kind of expensive now especially level three level four enlightened so uh that that's how we do it right now next we're going to go over the passive tree and the jewels uh so i wanted this build to be a bit more defensive than my usual builds so we got a lot more life nodes um we got some uh, chaos resistance uh corrupted blood cannot be affected you can take this off if you get a corrupted blood jewel but uh, and then we have ghost stance for extra defense. We have influence as well as charisma going for mana reservation efficiency. So we can put on our all our aura. It's pretty meta thing. Uh, if you have, I'm trying to go over the things you would have questions about. Uh, pick up all the claw nodes really strong uh, with skills supported by Nightblade have 40% increased effect of elusive. One of the biggest nodes we can get on our tree, um, as well as the dagger mastery. Gain a uh, elusive grants 40 crit multi. 40 crit multi is pretty insane. Um, and then we also get 40% elusive effect. The the nodes that say uh, dagger damage and attack speed with dagger, we're not taking advantage of those. We're not actually getting that attack speed and damage with daggers. We're just getting the movement speed and the elusive effect. But elusive effect is so strong for this build that we just don't care and we want it. Um, we got a little bit of leech because uh, leech on top of life and mana gained it's just you have two little bars so uh if you look at the claw it says 38 life gained on hit for each hit and 14 mana so when you hit that enemy you get that damage instant or that that regen e instantly but when you have things that say leech leeches over time and it like slowly grows so since so when we hit an enemy we're kind of getting both which is really nice um just to make us uh more defensive um anything else i want to go over <laughs> that seems super important uh we we take some of the mark the prey is actually really strong for um if you want to do more bossing damage uh frenzy charge generation is from this node because we mark enemies all the time constantly going through the maps anytime we hit a rare enemy mark on hit procs kill the enemy 10 percent chance when we hit to gain that frenzy charge and then we're also getting power charges from assassin's mark um if you read the the quality cursed enemies have a five percent chance to grant power charges when you're mapping you're going to sustain max power charges and frenzy charges um by the time you hit like when you're like 30 40 percent way of done um with the map if it's a little bit juiced another note that's very very important is uh uh this node right here projectile mastery projectiles deal 20 percent increased damage for each enemy pierced since Spectral Helix goes in a circle, it'll hit t dozens of enemies when it's swirling, and it gets 20% increased damage for every enemy hit. So sometimes your projectiles will be doing insane damage if you hit tons of enemies. So this is really good for doing uh, hitting big mobs and farming maps. And that's pretty much it for the passive tree that I wanted to go over. <laughs> I'll go over Ascendancy really quick. Uh, Tailwind, Gathering Winds, best node for Deadeye. Uh, we're taking focal point because uh, we want our assassin's mark doing a lot of damage and uh, giving us a lot of benefits. Uh, far shot is one of the most underrated nodes in the game, in my opinion. I think this is like top 10 best nodes you can get. Um, you get as the start of the movement dealing up to 60% more damage to targets as they travel further. 60% more damage. If you look at elemental damage uh elemental damage with attacks we're getting 34 percent more damage this is 60 percent more damage that node alone and spectral helix hits its maximum um distance after like one and a half rotations which is really easy to hit um especially if you're bossing so you get 60 percent more damage by this taking this node so this is by far one of the best nodes you can take for spectral helix as well as other projectile builds that you can focus on getting really far so if you're playing like tornado shot and you're using barrage and you can go really far away uh you will do tons of damage as well so uh really underrated node and then lastly we're taking uh wind ward which is just giving us more defensive layers uh honestly this is a node that i don't really care for because we lose our tailwind 
a ton, but it does help us not get one shot. So it has some negatives and positives. And that's pretty much it for the build. This build is very, very good for leak start. Um, again, I want to mention this build is not min maxed. It's maxed out for a like leak start viable. No little uh, techs that are super expensive. Uh, all of this gear is craftable on SSF and hardcore and all that stuff. And uh, if you want to start getting into the min max, you can go. Um, I can show you. I was looking. Uh, there was a lot of people going uh, Omni on this build. So you, as you can see, uh, like this is closer to a min max version. They're going uh, Brass Dome for extra maximum elemental resi uh, resistance. Um, and then they're using a lot of little techs and stuff. But the main part I want to talk about is they're using Omniscience, which is giving them a huge damage boost. Um, my build currently is doing about 1.7 million, and they're doing 2.3, but then they have more defense than me. Um, what other builds have Omni? 76% of all, uh, of all Spectral Helix guys are using it. So 1.3. Um, I think this is kind of wrong. So they get their in insane elemental pen. So, uh, you can believe that these guys are doing more damage and are a little bit more defensive than me. Um, like this guy, 5.4, he might be a POB juicer. We'll see. Uh, no, he just has good gear. Reservation efficiency. So the big thing is blizzard crown is a big upgrade. If you can manage to get a blizzard crown. 83 to 123 added cold damage to your attacks is very very strong uh you're treating your hits as like you like you have they have more cold res but we have a lot of pen thanks to trinity and um um uh what's that node called on our tree oh i don't want to open you uh we have extra pen from uh forces of nature and things like that so we get, we have a little bit of pen but if you're using omni blizzard crown is unbeatable for a helmet that's the best in slot by far so yeah i just wanted to show you guys a little bit of uh different ways you can go i would definitely go omni omni is about 40 exalts still unfortunately but i also really enjoy this build and if um you want to take it further this is uh one of the you can look up this pob kind of look at what they're doing and follow them um, that's definitely what you want to do if you want to go Omni, but if you're not looking to go Omni, this, my version of the build is very close in DPS, um, more closer than you would think, but it is definitely an upgrade to get Omni. So, uh, that's all I wanted to say for this, uh, build guide. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys on the next video later.